Now we'll try to find out what is the magnetic dipole moment due to um, an electron that is revolving, right? Let us say there is an electron that revolves in a circular orbit, okay? This is a circular orbit and an electron revolves around it, say like, like this. Okay. Now, let the, so, so, so we say that there is an electron revolving in a circular orbit. of radius r okay radius r with velocity v okay and time period t Okay. Now, if this happens, then an observer who is kind of, say, watching from here, right, he or she will see that every t second this electron passes, right? Because t is the time period. Time period is the is the amount of time that you take to complete one full rotation, right? One full revolution. So, so what happens is, is we know that current is nothing but the amount of charge that passes a given cross section in a given amount of time t so delta q upon delta t is the is the current right now what happens here every time t second an electron passes right so here what is my current my current is e upon capital t is it not? what is the direction of that conventional current this correct correct fine now what is t the time period t is nothing but but the total distance traveled upon the velocity with which it is traveling right now between one and two from 1 and 2, we have from 1 and 2, we have i is equal to e upon t and we know the value of t. So, it becomes e v upon 2 pi r, right? Correct? Now, we see it sweeps an area, okay? This, this, this electron sweeps an area and it's equivalent to, to a current and the radius is r. So, what is the magnetic moment associated with this? The, the magnetic moment magnetic moment and we call it mu L here associated with the movement of electron with the movement of electron is what it is 
I into A, is it not? So mu L is equal to I into A, which is nothing but I into pi R square, which is, what is, what is the value of I? I is EV upon 2 pi R into pi R square. Pi cancels. R cancels it once. So I get this as EVR upon 2. This is your magnetic moment, right? Magnetic moment. Right? This is the magnetic moment. Now, what is the direction of the magnetic moment? The current is like that, so, so the magnetic moment is actually into the paper, right? So into the screen, so it's like that, into the screen, isn't it? Into the screen, do not get confused by this angle being this. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of talking about, about the plane that is the, the, the direction that is perpendicular to this. So it, it is kind of moving in, okay? Now, now, let us say I try to manipulate this. So it is mu L is equal to E, E upon two. I multiply this by the mass of the electron. So ME into V into R. The, the, the numerator becomes ME into V into R. And I divide it by ME, so this becomes this. Okay? Fine. Now, what is MVR? While doing the rotational motion, we had seen that our angular momentum, L, was given by R cross P and in a circular setup when when the when when R cross MV right now in a circular sort of setup say say that of this electron moving in a circle what happens if if this is the electron moving this is my direction of V right this is the direction of V that I have, right? And this is the direction of R that I have. And, and the direction of V matches with the direction of MV because M is positive. It's a scalar multiplication, right? So R cross P, what do I have to do? I have to shift this vector, okay? I have to shift this MV vector so that they are co-initial like that. And R cross P, R cross P, this is, this is your P. R cross P is outward, it is towards us, right? So R cross MV, if, if I'm kind of concerned only with the magnitude of it, then L is R into MV into sine theta, R and V, the MV, or V, they are at 90 degrees, so it is sine 90 degrees, and then that gives us R M V or M V R that, that that you see here, right? This is this is V. This is a V. M V R. We see that. So I can say very well that this is L. E into L. This whole thing is, this whole thing is L, as, as we saw here. 
E L upon two M E. Is it not? That's your mu L. Okay. Now, if I try to assign it a vector direction, because both the magnetic moment as well as this angular momentum, both of them are vectors. But then there is a trouble. My R cross P is pointing towards me. And so, so, so the direction of R cross P is, is this. So, so this is the direction of L. Right? And the direction of the direction of mu L is into the paper. You see that? Now if that is the case, the moment I try to assign the vector notation to it, it comes with a negative sign. So if I say this is this, then, then to flip L which is pointing towards us in the direction into the paper, we have to apply a negative vector. So E into L upon 2ME. Okay, so this is 2ME. Correct. This should hold. Fine. Now what would have ha happened had I taken a, a particle with a positive charge? For a particle with positive charge, for a particle with positive charge, no, for, for a particle with positive charge, you see, so if, if it was a positively charged particle that is moving like that, it would have constituted a current in the same direction. And my, my mu L would have been outward. And so would have been my L. So they would have been pointing in the same direction. L is also in the same direction. Correct? Okay, for a particle with a positive charge, L and mu L would be in the same direction. Right? Now, now let us try to find out what is the value of mu L upon L, right? Mu L upon L. We have our, we have our mu L as, let me, let me write it here. Mu L magnitude wise, mu L is equal to E L upon 2ME. Correct? So what is mu L upon L? No, for, for, for the negative charge because, because we are now, now dealing with the magnitudes, right? So what is the value of mu L upon L? Mu L upon L is nothing but E upon 2ME right and this is called the gyromagnetic ratio 
Yeah. But it could be a proton as well. No? Then it will have to be MP. Yes. So this is called the gyromagnetic ratio. Right? Mu L upon L, E upon 2 Me. And what is that value? Okay? We can find out that value. This is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 upon 2 into 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31. Right? And this value comes out to 1.6 to the power minus 19 divided by 2 that gives you this divided by 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 which is kind of 8.8 .8 into 10 to the power 10 which is 8.8 .8 into 10 to the power 10 And what should be the unit? What should be the unit? Unit is, is, is charge upon mass, right? So it should be coulomb per kg. And so should be the unit of this. No? This magnetic moment. Magnetic moment is what? It is? It is? I into A and L is what? It is M into V into R. Right? Let us see the dimension. What is I? This is Coulomb per second. Right? So so if I start writing those units, so it is Coulomb per second into meter square, right? Divided by kg into meter per second right so I, I throw that second up and into meter let us see what happens this meter and meter together cancel this and the second and second cancel this so it is indeed coulomb per kg fine Now, if you find that the electrons are indeed moving in, in, in some paths, let's say not all this circular, then what happens? There is an associated dipole moment with each electron that is revolving around an atom, right? There has to be an associated dipole moment. With, with each atom right and that we will see actually defines the magnetic properties of materials okay so there is an associated there is an associated magnetic dipole magnetic dipole moment with each atom and it affects the magnetic properties of the materials properties of the materials Now this we'll see when we actually study magnetism and matter. It's, it's a very important thing to understand. Okay? Now we also know that that as per the Bohr's postulates, okay, 
the Bohr Bohr's postulate said that L is is quantized. The angular momentum of an electron is quantized, and he said that it comes in the quanta of h upon 2 pi. N h upon 2 pi. So quanta is small packet. Quanta is packet. It comes either as nothing or it comes as h upon 2 pi or it comes as 2 h upon 2 pi. Mm -hmm. So that is the packetization of it. It is discrete. It is not continuously variable. Okay. While solving the uh, the the uh, let me take you take you back a little. When when Rutherford came up with his structure of atom. And he said that 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 they keep on the electrons keep on revolving around a positively charged nucleus. So the immediate question was that the electrons that are moving in a circular orbit are accelerated electrons. And as we'll see in, in, in the chapter for the electromagnetic waves, an accelerated charged particle always always leads to an electromagnetic wave. It will create an electromagnetic wave. And if it and an and electromagnetic wave carries energy. And if it radiates that electromagnetic wave, then then its own energy will go down. And if it, if its own energy goes down, then its magnet then, then, then its kinetic energy will go down. As its as its velocity goes down, it'll it'll not go in the same 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 path, the purple path. It will now kind of Okay, start coming nearer and nearer and nearer and, and a time will come when it will kind of drop down into the nucleus, right? But that does not happen. You had one equation that, that was like KQ1 or, or, or if this is very, okay, so let me call it K. If, if this is very, then K Z into E upon R square is equal to mv square upon r. Let's say if it is an nth cell, then, then we use the subscript n everywhere. Now this tells us that for whatever value of rn, there must be a value of vn that will kind of keep on moving the electrons in a given orbit, right? So there are infinite solutions to this. Okay? Now Bohr had this 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 intuition that 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 cannot happen because because somehow the atoms are stable and they are not radiating energy even while they are accelerating. So they have to be at a certain distance, right? So they cannot take all positions. And if you wanted a unique value of Rn and Vn, you had to have you had to have another equation in Rn and Vn, and that is this equation. L is nothing but m v n r n and that is equal to n into h upon 2 pi. So since I now have two equations and two variables, it is uniquely solved and those are those r n's where the electrons will actually move and which are called now the steady states where where they can keep on revolving without radiating any energy whatsoever. Understand. And this fact is quantum mechanically true. That is the wonder of all this. Okay, we do get steady state solutions of this where they, they, they move around and that matches with the classical classical interpretation of the hydrogen atom right so l is equal to nh by 2 pi and if i put that value i have my mu l mu l is equal to mu l was equal to el upon E L upon 2 M E, right? So, so if I if I put it back, it is E L upon 2 M E, right? So if I put this value of 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 L, I get E into N H 
by 2 pi nh by 2 pi okay e into 2 me get that Do we understand? Now, what is the minimum value for this? Mu L minimum is when N is equal to N, 1, right? So that is E into 1 into H upon 4 by ME, right? This is the minimum value of the magnetic moment. Okay, and if we put the values, we find it to be so it is E H upon 4 pi Me, we find it to be so. So this is actually 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. What is the value of H? It is 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 upon 4 pi into. 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 right and if I use the calculator it is 1.6 okay into 6.6 .6, right 6.63 and that is divided by 4 and we get this which is divided by by pi and we get this and which is divided by 9.1 to give us this is 0 0.09276 okay so so this is this is equal to 0 0.0927 okay and and I have this minus 31 going to the numerator 31 minus 19 is plus 12 plus 12 minus 34 is minus 22 so this is this into 10 to the power minus 22 right now that is equal to if I multiply it by 100 divide by 100 that becomes 9.27 into 10 to the power minus 24 and since this is nothing but magnetic moment which is NIA it is ampere meters square right this is called the Bohr's magneton this is called the Bohr's magneton right it's called the Bohr's magneton the minimum value of the magnetic moment that you can have Okay.